Good afternoon. Um, I appreciate your invitation to come today, and I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my personal connection to nature, um, and through my personal story, hopefully um, persuade you to thinking about um, personal experiences with wildlife and how they can help us make this world uh, a better world. So I will be sharing with you um, a love story of mine um, and how I fell in love with wildlife um, and got involved with conservation. I'm going to start with a poem I wrote. Wide-eyed with pigtails, a young girl like me wanders among her teachers, wildlife, earth, tree. Splashing through creeks and turning up stones, water rocking bugs and salamander homes. <laughs> Dandelion bouquets and willow branch crowns, a tickle on her foot as long legs scrambles down. Dancing with fireflies as twilight follows day, sun sleeps behind cornfields while cricket wings play. Now eyes, now pigtails are gone, yet eyes still open wide. She shares her love with nature by taking the kids outside. And I wrote this poem as kind of an ode to nature, um, and it really does sort of capture the essence of how um, that bond between me and the, the wild world began. In addition to exploring the prairies and woodlands surrounding my childhood home, um, I would also eagerly await the arrival of the latest issue of my Ranger Rick magazine, a children's magazine published by National Wildlife Federation. Um, and I was fascinated by all of the different animals that were in the pages of that magazine. And then once or twice a year, we would uh, get the whole family packed into the old Chevette and take uh, the two-hour drive to the nearest zoo. And uh, this is where I saw those animals I had read about and maybe seen on TV. I don't think we had Animal Planet back then, but um, this is where they came alive. Uh, we also had pets growing up, and uh, I actually had one of my first lessons in um, animal behavior given to me by a gerbil. Um, my dad brought home a pair of gerbils one day, and one of them uh, only had three legs, and I named him Greg after a boy I'd had a crush on that lived down the street. And um, then the other gerbil had four legs, a regular standard gerbil, and I named him Gary after my father. Um, and I noticed that Greg really liked to hang out in the skybox um, that was the top, you know, it's like a cage with a tube and then a little box at the top, and he really liked to spend a lot of time there. And it turned out that gerbils are sort of territorial by nature, and uh, Gary had kind of claimed that whole bottom cage as his territory, and actually was not allowing Greg to come down, even for food or water. So this was a tragic ending for Greg. By the time we noticed what was happening, it was too late for him. But for me, um, it really was a lesson in the true nature of, well, nature, um, and it piqued my curiosity. And it really got me to more closely observe um, and investigate the natural world. So um, I went to college to study zoology, and I learned a lot about wildlife and conservation um, through all of the lectures and the labs and the books that I read. Um, but what really made me care about it and what really motivated me to do something about it um, were the transformative experiences I had with animals. Um, and that really developed during a summer and internship that I did at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, yes, there was a lot of cleaning up animal poo. Um, there was chopping up produce. Um, but there were also some just amazing experiences. I got to feed grapes to a lemur and shake hand and trunk with an elephant. Um, and so it, it really clinched it for me. Um, this is where I fell in love and where I knew 
um, that I had to do something. I had to go to work for wildlife and go to bat for it. Uh, I couldn't imagine a world without these wonderful creatures. So um, now I work at the zoo um, and I've been there about, well, 11 years now. Um, and uh, I work in the education department as the interpretive media manager and spend my days creating those opportunities for people to have those personal and meaningful experiences directly with the animals. Um, with the help of our animal ambassadors, this is Mo the Sloth, um, we're trying to break that traditional mold of a zoo where you come and walk around and look at animals to really engage you on a deeper personal level. Here are some of the ways we're doing that. <laughs> simply put this message into all of our uh, visitor engagement programs to uh, recycle a cell phone and save a gorilla. You just simply grab that phone, Bob. Okay. You walk it right over here to the recycling bin and put it in. Oh. All right. All right, good job there. So our animal ambassadors have been a big help with this as well. Um, but cell phones and gorillas. Um, there's a, an ore called coltan that's in our cell phones that we use, and it's mined in gorilla habitat. So the idea is that the more we can recycle cell phones, um, the less demand there will be to go out and mine for new coltan so that it... Um, is less disturbing to their habitat. So, um, so far this year, we've collected over 4,300 phones, and that's a record for any zoo in North America. And uh, I hope that you will check that out and give us the old cell phones you have in your drawers at home, and we'll take any model, you know, back to the 80s, whatever. Um, so, a cheetah racing by, and a giraffe taking a cracker from your hand, and having a snake slither through your fingers. What the world needs now are more of these meaningful, personal, experiential, up close learning opportunities that lead to the passion that leads to making real changes for wildlife. And uh, even though I love the colors yellow, blue, and green, um, I also would like you to appreciate a little bit of black and white. Um, my friend Cody here has brought out filet. And Cody, can you tell us a little bit about your friend? Yeah, this is filet. He's one of our little penguins from Southern Australia, Northern New Zealand, hatched out in our penguin exhibit. He is our youngest bird that we have at the Cincinnati Zoo, youngest penguin that we have at the Cincinnati Zoo at just two years old. Great, and um, how uh, would people get a chance to meet him? Uh, one of the great things that we do every single day, and I, I get to take part in that as well, 
is we do a Meet a Keeper program and every day at a couple different times throughout the day, which it'll be on your zoo map or on our website, CincinnatiZoo.org. But if you check those out, you will see that we have Meet a Keepers going on and you can meet one of these guys and get hands on with him and kind of just discuss penguins every single day. And that's one of the coolest things about my job. And you get to meet this little guy, one of our animal ambassadors. Pretty cool little guy. Great. Well, thank you for coming out. And I do invite you all to come down to the zoo, meet some of our friends in person, have those experiences. The zoo's not just for kids, it's for everybody. Um, and really think about how important it is um, to have these creatures in our world and what we can do um, to help that out and keep things, keep things going. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Cody and Filet.